How to Do a Book Talk by me, Mr. Burby. You're probably used to doing book reports, which are also known as book reviews. And this year I'm going to ask you to do something a little different. I don't want you to do a book report because people who do book reports usually first hate doing them and secondly hate them because they basically just retell the story of the book, which I've always thought is silly because if you really want to know what happens in the book, go read it. And don't sit there listening to someone else or reading someone else's report telling you what happened. I'm more interested in something beyond what happened. And so we're going to do book talks. Book talks are actually quite simple. There's just a few strategies you have to learn and a couple of things you have to make sure you do. First, make sure you finish the book. Second, make sure that you have a copy of the book with you that you can show. And if it's on a Kindle, we can at least pull up uh, a cover image from Amazon or some other website to show the audience so they can get a picture of that in their head. You have to make sure you've judged the book up to five stars, five meaning you loved it, uh, one meaning you hated it, or anywhere in between, and then um, you're going to talk about the book. At the end, you're going to tell us um, uh, you know, a little bit about it by reading to us a passage that you think is important, and then when you're all done, you'll take a few questions, and then you're done. It's very simple. It usually takes about five minutes, if that. So we'll start off by saying that you're going to say, Hi, I read this book. You're going to tell us the title. You're going to tell us the author. You're going to tell us the genre. You're going to tell us where you got it and how many pages it has. And... Um, I think at that point, too, you might even want to mention the Lexile in case people are interested in that. Then you're going to start talking about the book. And here's where the difference comes in. Book talks are like movie trailers. Their purpose is to sell the book. You want to give just enough of the plot to interest the listeners, but you're not giving a summary of the book. You don't want to give away any important parts. No spoilers, please. And you certainly never want to give away the ending. What you should do is highlight some interesting points. Tell us some information about the character and why you like or dislike that character and whether or not they've grown. Tell us a little bit about the plot. Kind of set it up for us, who, what, where, when. And then just give us enough to make us want to read some. The main purpose of this book talk is to grab the audience's interest and make them read the book. So it's always a good idea uh, to end that book talk, I think, with uh, your five, four, three, two, or one star recommendation. You're going to present this to a classroom of students. You're going to be sitting in a nice comfy chair. Everyone's going to be looking at you and listening to you. You're going to have the microphone. And um, when you're done, there'll be questions. Usually they're not many, and usually they're questions that are easy to answer. So what I'd like to do now is give you a book talk. Now, uh, here's an example. Hi, I read The Giver by Lois Lowry. And it is copyright 1993. Its genre is science fiction, and it has 232 pages. So it involves a character named Jonas, and he has a very functional family in a very safe community somewhere in, a, in the future. And he's waiting for the ceremony of the Twelves when the children are assigned their vocations or their jobs that they'll have for their lives by the elders of the community. Some of the kids will be doctors, some will be food prep workers, some will be birth mothers. Jonas is assigned to be the receiver, a very honored assignment. He's given a list of rules to follow and begins to train with the former receiver, who is now the giver. The giver begins to give Jonas memories, memories of all the people back and back for many generations. The people in Jonas's community have only the memories of their own generation – it's safer that way. They can't handle the memories of war or hunger, so the receiver keeps these memories for everybody. The giver gives Jonas memories of joy and pain and snow and love and colors, which the others can no longer see. And Jonas, in turn, gives some of his soothing memories to the young male Gabriel, his father has brought home to nurture, and with the memories, succeeds in helping Gabriel to sleep well when nothing else works. Jonas and the giver decide that they must return the memories to the people of the community, so they create an elaborate plan of escape. Their plan, however, is shattered when Jonas learns that Gabriel will soon be released from the community. 
Jonas can't let this happen, so he runs away from the community with Gabriel, leaving the giver to help the people deal with the memories that will return to them when Jonas is gone. As he goes farther from the community, he begins to see things from his memories and eventually has memories of his own as he reaches a new community where there's color and music. I like the character of Jonas very much because he has to face uh, some facts about the world and his life and his family and his society that aren't necessarily comforting, and yet he perseveres and faces them. He's brave, he shows courage, and when he's done, he makes a decision that's going to separate him from everything he knows and loves, but he does it by being uh, brave and altruistic, which is a word that means he's trying to do it for the good of everyone. So he runs away, he he leaves so that others can have the richness that he's glimpsed with his time with the giver. I would give this book five stars. It reads pretty quickly. Uh, it's written at a Lexile Grape for middle school, um, and it's a page turner. It makes just enough information is given to make you want to know why. There's often this wondering you do when you read the book, and you go, wow, I wonder how far we are from this world. This world's a lot like ours. Uh, how, what, what do we need to do to make sure our world doesn't end up like this world? So you'll choose a portion of the book to read. It doesn't have to be very long. And then when you're done, you're done. All right. So that's sort of a quick and lowdown on how to do a book talk. I've given you some examples in class. Here's another example I just gave you. If you have questions, come see me. Uh, it would be good. Here's my last parting hint. It would be good to take notes. Just have notes in front of you on a piece of paper that you can look at and refer to. If you want to, you can read something you've already written, too. That's fine. Um, good luck.